Steins Gate is my favorite anime. Hell, it's probably my favorite story in fiction. I've watched it around 5 or 6 times and even played the original visual novel. So trust me when I say this video is neither from a place of hate nor from a place of not understanding the series. While the original visual novel has some plot holes here and there, and the movie as a whole doesn't really make sense if you think about it, and zero dodges around a lot of questions, the original adaptation of Science Gate is almost perfect. As far as time travel goes, I have yet to see a story closer to perfection than Science Gate. But even with that, there is one thing, one single problem, a single f***ing plot hole that stops me from being able to call it flawless. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what that problem is, and how drastically the ending of Science Gate would have changed if it wasn't for this problem. Embrace yourself fellow lab members, because this might change your entire perception of the already great ending. But before I just start blabbering about the problem, I'm going to explain a few plot points just to make sure we are all on the same page. So with that said, let's finally begin. The entire timeline of Science Gate's story is divided into three generations. The first Sokobe that started it all was Zero. The one who heard the scream of in the first episode of Science Gate. The one who never got the corrupted message and never went back to save Kurusu for the second time. The Okabe that we follow throughout Science Gate Zero. He lives a life of regret and tries to fix it. He sends a message to the past to fix his mistake ends up going to an unknown timeline at the end. There are two different reasons for that. First, he had promised to go back to save Mari and Suzuma. According to the timeline, the day he What's the plan? I'm going to space! is the date of his death. So if he is going to die, he might as well go to that unknown timeline even if his chances of survival are not the highest. It's still better than dying at the hands of fate. For all we know, he could take them to time long into the past or into the future. I mean, I would watch a sequel of Okabe in the Middle Ages with Maria and Suzuha. And you're lying if you say you wouldn't. So, for those two reasons, he passes down his regretful torch of knowledge to the next Okabe. And after that, as a wise man once said, he... But please, tell us what's so important that you need to abandon us to fuck off into space. Because I made a promise! <laughs> Okay, pay attention kiddos, it's gonna get complicated. The next Okabe is Okabe 1. The one we follow throughout the original story, the one who gets the corrupted message, and the one who goes back the second time to save Kurusu. The Okabe he meets there is Okabe number 2. Okabe 1 stabs himself to make Okabe 2 believe that Kurusu is dead, and then goes back to the original timeline, and they live happily ever after. Except that there is a problem with that. As the show specifies, when the problem is fixed, Suzuha would have never come to the past, because she wouldn't have a reason to do so. Much as I might like to, I'm afraid I can't stick around. So let me get a thank you out now while I can. <laughs> it's been a trip. Thank you. See you in seven years. Meaning, just like how Okabe Zero ceases to exist the moment Okabe One goes back to save Kurusu for the second time, Okabe One should also perish the moment he tries to come back. After all, he is not the one who reaches Stein's Gate. Just think about it. If Okabe One is the one who reaches Stein's Gate, then what happened to Okabe Two? The answer is that it's a mistake. After the change, Okabe One won't exist because he wouldn't need to exist, just like Zero. You know, that was probably way too confusing. So I'm just going to tell you what would ha change in the story if what I'm saying was implemented in it. That should make it a lot easier to understand what I'm trying to say. Okaba stabs himself to fake Kurusu's death. He gets into the time machine and smiles, and the monologue plays as tears gather in his eyes. Best of luck. You'll need it. The next three weeks, 
It'll be the hardest three weeks of your life. He finishes with one last sentence. I just wish I could see it. And then bursts into tears. As the sound of Okabe crying slowly fades, there is a montage of Okabe 2 going through everything Okabe 1 and 0 went through. But when he goes back, thinking Kurisu is dead, she isn't. That's when he realizes that he has indeed reached Sang's gate. Not only the monologue would make the Okabe 1's death hurt like hell, it would also end with a note that screams. Despite everything, it wasn't all for nothing. Despite everything, Okabe defeated fate itself. Despite everything, he reached his happy end.